praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my joy to be here tonight. And praise the Lord. While standing, I just allow me to say a word or two and then we'll sit. Your pastor, Pastor Kingsley, is not just a man of God, he truly is a good man. Truly. Hallelujah. And I'm saying this because I love Jesus, I love him, I honor him profoundly and what he's doing. The, the little time that we had over the office, I, I just, I just, I could discern the love, the sincerity for God and for you. Thank you, sir. Truly honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. Such an honor to be here. Hallelujah. And then, Pastor Gideon, thank you. I honor you and I love you so much, sir. Hallelujah. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace, your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Father, we declare tonight in the name of Jesus that this will be our testimony in this conference. Inside, outside, following online, our hearts are open to receive. And we pray and we cry unto you, speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord put something, we'll be seated shortly, but the Lord put a message in my heart that I believe it is not only for this church and this conference. I think it's a, it's a very powerful teaching for the body of Christ. And so I'd like you to listen with your heart opened. I pray that the truth here will set us on fire like the foxes of Samson. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. We're going to start tonight's teaching with two prayer requests. This is one. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Someone prophesy. It says... You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. Lord, I declare that this level, this level, this level, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm tired of this spiritual level, this financial level, Someone is praying. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. Spiritually, financially, maritally, career-wise, in business. Take me to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus. point number two and then we'll sit. The Bible says when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion 
It says we were like them that dream. And our mouths were filled with laughter. And they said among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for them. He said the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. The request is turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Please lift your voice in one minute and ask the Lord to give you a visitation. Turn my life around in the name of Jesus Christ. Please pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, please be seated. God bless you. The laws of advancement. The laws of advancement. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15. I'm teaching on the laws of advancement. These are irrefutable spiritual principles that are responsible for the advancement of men and women in this kingdom. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. God is a God that desires that we move forward, that we make progress that we have notable results in our lives. John 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. God desires that we make progress. In fact, everything that is alive grows. Everything that is alive increases. Are we together? Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased or grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. It says it shines more and more onto the perfect day. So God is a God of advancement. Please understand this. It is his will that we make progress spiritually, financially, maritally, career-wise, all of the dimensions of your life that we make progress. Let me share with you a scripture that has blessed my life. First Samuel chapter 12, please, and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Please read it. Ready? It's projected. One, two, read. And Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Stop. Stop. That means in this kingdom, men do not just move. When you see people move from one dimension of victory and exploits to another, the Bible says behind the scene, it is the Lord that advances men. So when you see your pastor moving from one level to the other, triumphing, that it is the Lord that advances men. No man sustains the ability in himself to make progress. You can be well intentioned, but in this kingdom, it is the Lord that advances men. So behind every strange result that you see, behind the mysterious exploits and the rising of men in this kingdom that dumbfounds the wisdom of men, it is the Lord that advances people. The Lord is going to advance someone in this place. Yeah. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. You just saw Moses moving forward. You just saw Aaron moving forward. But the Bible is saying it was the Lord. That means when we see you moving forward, that by April, you turn back and it looks like 10 years was put in one year. When, 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 when people ask you and say, I, 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 the last time I met you, it was not like this. Spiritually, financially, you will refer them to this scripture. That behind the exploits of the saints, it is the Lord that advances men. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. 
God is a God that operates by laws and systems. Please look up. The character of the kingdom is such that you will hardly find God do the same thing twice in scripture. The first thing God does or introduces to men is the model of what he wants to do. In everything he does the first time is a seed and a pattern for the continuity of that result. So when he wants to make man, he makes the first man, the first woman and never has to make man and woman again. He created a pattern. Are we together now? So that every time you want more men, you subscribe to the law. Are, are we together now? God has not had any cause to create plants and animals again because he made them and weaved in them a pattern and a system. God is a God of systems. And if you do not understand his methodologies, you may never enjoy the rich benefit. Even though you are a partaker of that life, you may be alienated from the life of God. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Are we together? So we need to understand the systems of God and he operates by laws, spiritual laws. Advancement in the kingdom has laws. There are spiritual principles that when we walk in keeping with those principles, inevitably, let me say this before I begin to just share, there are three levels of experiencing the power of God or the power of God is vested upon men in three levels. Number one, there is the dimension of the power of God that comes through encounters. When you encounter God, there is a dimension of his power that is invested in encounters. If it is the God of the Bible you meet, you will never be the same after you meet him. There is a dimension of his power that comes upon you. Number two, there is a dimension of the power of God that is invested in laws and principles. Please understand this. The power that makes laws and principles work is still the power of God. So there is a dimension of the power of God that is invested in laws and principles. You do not have to acknowledge God to access that power. You just have to understand the laws. Are we together now? So you can deny God. You can reject God. And yet, because you understand the principles, the power was designed to be released at the instance of understanding. The moment you understand the principle that governs that spiritual process, the power of God is released. It is at this level that principalities and powers and all kinds of um, sects, religious sects, seem to be able to tap into spiritual power. It's at that frequency that there is a dimension of God's power that was invested in laws and knowing him was not a condition to release that power. Understanding his principles is what releases the power. Number three, there is a dimension of God's power that is invested through covenant with men. This is not for everyone. You partake of that dimension of power to the degree to which you align with who and what God is doing part time. So if there is something prophetic God is doing with your pastor, listen to me. There are certain covenants that he can have with God that makes for certain possibilities in this assembly. You will be surprised that even before you understand the principle responsible for that result, you will already be enjoying it because you are under, you are enjoying the dimension of power that comes through God's vow and God's covenant with a man. There are people before you started tithing, God started prospering you. Even before you understood what you were doing. Before you started giving, before you started committing yourself, it was because God had a covenant with a man that anyone who comes under your spiritual influence will benefit from that which you have with God. I said all that so that you will understand that the principles of the kingdom, spiritual laws are powerful. They are irrefutable. When you read Genesis 11, 
The Bible talks about Nimrod, the son of Cush. His desire to build a city whose tower and the top will reach the heavens. In that, in that story, Satan was not mentioned. In that story, the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. Yet, God testified that he was the only one who could stop what they were doing. Laws are powerful. You will tame life when you understand spiritual laws. Hallelujah. The laws of advancement. Write this down. Growth and advancement in this kingdom must be intentional. There's no assumption as far as growth and advancement is concerned. It must be intentional that I desire to live this level spiritually. I desire to live this level financially. You will be amazed at how many people who hope to move forward. They wish to move forward. They believe that just because they are in Christ, one day automatically they will move forward. The only dimension of growth that looks automatic is your biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be initiated intentionally. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. And because you see, the principle of fulfillment is such that it is in your growth and progress that you find fulfillment. When you find fulfillment, you find fulfillment as you move, as you make progress. You will celebrate having a beautiful house now and having the money to pay for that rent. But after a few years, you will start getting angry that you are a tenant. You see that now. Something you once celebrated will no longer bless you again because there is an instinct for advancement. As a man of God, you will operate at a frequency in ministry and you'll be happy for a while and then later a dissatisfaction is in your spirit. God is a God of advancement. I want to share with you a few principles. I've had the privilege to glean from the wisdom of the word and the wisdom of uncommon mentors. What you are learning I submit to you are not the opinions of men. It is dangerous and even destructive to teach you opinions. The truths that I share with you are irrefutable principles guarded by God's own jealousy. From whatever point you are, if you walk in keeping with these truths, I give you a guarantee as touching the name of the Lord. You will never remain where you are. And believe me, I say it with all humility. I know what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you nonsense. He said, the things we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that is what we communicate unto you. So can you pray one more time? Open my eyes, oh God. Let me see. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus. The laws of advancement. Hallelujah. When I found out the systemic character of God, it changed my life because my spiritual background was such that I came from an evangelical background. And then when I began to have encounters with God, I was amazed that I was knowing him, getting deeper in the things of God, but in a shocking way, the quality of my life did not change, regardless my encounters. The only benefit I was receiving was spiritual benefit in terms of my knowledge of God. But the quality of my life, my influence, and I said something, this, something is wrong. How could I be having such profound encounters with the God of the Bible and yet my life would not change? Until I was introduced to the systemic character of God. That there is Jesus the way. Everybody say it. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If you know the truth, wonderful. If you know the life, wonderful. But I introduce to you in this conference, Jesus, the way, the methodology of the kingdom. It is still Jesus. Many people do not know Jesus the way. And if you do not know the way, then you don't know how results are obtained in this kingdom. The dimension of Jesus that reveals how results are obtained is called Jesus, 
the way. The way to growth. The way to increase. Are we together? Very quickly, let's conserve time. The first law of advancement that I want to share tonight is called the law of vision. The law of vision. Please pay attention. The law of vision. Jeremiah chapter 1, please, from verse 11 and 12. The law of vision. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see, but this is what I see, the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12. Then saith the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well, for I will hasten, my God. So there is a relationship between speed and vision. The moment you see well, you compel speed in your life. Because you have seen correctly, I will hasten. I was going to perform it anyway, but on the strength of the clarity of your vision, I will hasten my word to perform it. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 13, we're discussing vision. The Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art, northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards. 15. It says, For all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give unto thy seed forever. Not the land that is available. The one you see is the one that is given to you. There's vast land available, but as far as your vision can capture, that is what will be delivered unto you. What is vision? A clear picture of the next level of your life. A clear picture of your destiny. This is very powerful. There are many well-meaning believers, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and they have ignored the power of vision to the detriment of their progress. Vision is powerful. A clear picture of the next level of your life. It is in this area that both science and religion agree that without vision there is no movement. Motion is a function of vision. There is no car that does, does not have a provision to look at. There is no plane. No matter how, how managed they must give space because sight is what controls movement. The pilot must see the driver must see. The captain must see. I don't know any creature that has his eyes backward. Every creature I know has the eyes forward. Because you only move in the direction of your eyes. Vision is powerful. Please listen carefully. The vision for my life. This ministry continues to make giant strides in the spirit because your pastor has a vision very clear vision are we together now now as powerful as vision is it does not profit you just remaining as vision you must break your vision into goals and break your vision into daily tasks until your vision becomes daily tasks, it will only remain a dream in the realm of the spirit. There are people who have done well in terms of writing a theme that seems to coordinate their lives, but we are unable to break the visions into goals. What is a goal? A desired end, an expected end. A subset of that vision. And you break it into tasks. There is an energy, there is a power that vision gives. When you break your vision into tasks, it gives you focus. Vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things. There are many things you will not be able to have the courage to say no to until you have vision. Vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things. If you are not a man of vision, you are not a woman of vision, you will not have the courage to say no to so many things. And there are many things, 24 hours was given to you with respect to your vision. So time 
will never be enough to mix your vision alongside many distractions. You will have to cut away so many things to give you the time and to give you focus. Can I tell you this? The unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are given part of your life to. And you must be sure that every minute and every second you commit to anything is worth that while. Everybody say vision. Show me a man who has nothing working in his life but vision. I show you a man who is already working his way to a dimension of kingdom influence, dimension of grace that no principality and power can stop. Vision is powerful. I do not know any leader who is not visionary. Even the devil is visionary. He has been clear about his assignment. Even Jesus testified about the dexterity of Satan's assignment. That anytime you see him, he is there to steal, to kill, to destroy. There's no record of him coming to advise. There's no record of him coming. Anytime the thief cometh not, that means he has no business coming except this singular vision. No wonder he seems to be succeeding. The law is so powerful. where we are right now because we are hoping God will find a way of just lifting us very very spiritual but very wrong some of those superstitious thinkings in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be delivered from it now we have many sociological wise sayings they look spiritual because they've been handed down by well-intentioned people but these things are they give access to the devil to blind our minds and our progress one day you go better you've heard that kind of saying i know my god is too faithful to just leave me like that you are right but with respect to this truth you are wrong i introduce to you the god of systems hoping that your life will change just because it's alive let me tell you this, there are many children, there are many people who are dying. If God were to act, he would attend to them first before he comes to you. Even at the, at the detriment of your eternal salvation, he did not interrupt your choice. There are people today who woke up this morning, but as we speak, they are in hell now. And yet God is still seated on his throne. So hoping that one day something will just happen is a joke. You have to prophesy to yourself, myself, wake up. One day I will have a global ministry. One day in the name of Jesus I will bless me. Wonderful. Congratulations. Except for the fact that it will only remain a wish in the realm of the spirit. Let me tell you the difference between a wish and a goal. A wish is a desire with no responsibility commitment to it. When you set a goal, it is a strong desire that is backed up with the willingness to commit whatever it takes under God to actualize that goal. Responsibility is the key word. If all you have is just a desire it will never come to pass. Your desire must be able to sponsor the willingness to pay whatever price under God to see that it comes to pass. Are we together? You call it gaining momentum. So where the, the plane is only warming up. Vision. I am amazed, Pastor, at how many Christians, respectfully speaking, live absolutely visionless lives. People just move up and down and blame God for everything. When they can't see God, they blame pastors who they can see for everything and then blame parents, blame every... Now, I, I understand that sometimes these things can be emotionally overwhelming, but the day you start moving forward is the day you take responsibility over your destiny and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm tired of giving excuses. In the name of Jesus, I'm tired of, of legitimizing the continuity of mediocrity and weakness 
darkness in my life. I respect and I sympathize with your background. I, I sympathize with the fact that you came from a family that was not very responsible. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I sympathize with you, but wake up from where thou art. Lift up your eyes. For as long as you keep looking down, you will soon find your children looking with you. You will soon find your grandchildren joining them to look with you. Many of our parents, respectfully speaking, kept complaining until we now join them in that complaint. You will make up your mind in this conference that my children will not find me there. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are few people, historically speaking, who had the leverage to be able to rise to positions of influence and notoriety. Most people had to speak to themselves right from where they were. You ask your pastor, he will tell you that there were times he had to just shut away and say, look, it's time for us to move forward. I remember talking with a man, very great and influential man, and this man told me, Apostle, would you believe that as at the time I married my wife, I had to give her one of my big sheds when she was pregnant. That means you remove your shirt and say, wife, there's no buying, uh, you know, those, those gowns. Said, I don't have the money for that. Don't expect anything there. But uh, thank God I'm bigger than you. We can make do with this. The Lord will prosper us in the future. Now, that man would have given a careless excuse and now mentored the child and say, young man, let me tell you how you arrived. Let me tell you the story. And the child in anger and pain will remain there, become a teenager, become an adult, marry his own wife and say, don't, don't, don't blame me for being irresponsible. I'm continuing something. There is a, there is a history to this. There has to be someone who will break that cycle. And it's, it comes with the power of vision. What seest thou? As for me, I see a life of glory. In the name of Jesus, I see an opportunity to wake up every morning, transforming a generation, blessing a people. For someone, you are seeing a company that God has been speaking to you. You have refused to write it. You have refused to take it serious. The Holy Ghost works like a woman. If he tries to give you his attention and you ignore it, he will step back until he discerns seriousness from you again. Many of you, the reason why God stops showing you certain things is because he trains that you don't take his speaking serious. of your father's house the first assignment is come out come out of your father's house he came from a land of wizardry and witchcraft or of the Chaldeans and he called that traditionally he said come out of your father's house from your kindred from everything to a land that I will show you the transformation started when he changed what he was seeing may grace to be visionary rest upon your life Hear me, you may be in that one room now. There's no point faking what can be real. Just be patient with your destiny. You see, the powerful thing about vision is that it has the power of omnipresence. You can be in a room and your vision can be where you will be tomorrow. The, the imagination is powerful. It can go, you can't, listen, listen. Your vision works with your imagination and it can, it can go to your future. Make sure it supervises that that future is real. It will come back and take your body there. Are we together? Vision. Let's hurry up. Number two. The second spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is the law of light. The power of of spiritual illumination and insight. Please pay attention. In this kingdom we rise by the light that we possess. The law of light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he was praying for them. And he desired that they might be filled with three dimensions of light. Number one, the knowledge of God's will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. It takes light to rise in this kingdom. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul said, I went up by revelation. 
Galatians 2 2. I went up, it took more than desire. From where I was, I went up, and it was revelation that took me up. I went up by revelation. Light is powerful in this kingdom. Psalms 45 and verse 4. And in your majesty, he says, rise, ride prosperously because of truth. And in your majesty, ride prosperously. Triumph. Move forward because of the truth that you know. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Very, very humbling scripture. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them. There's no exception to it. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The city is there, but the method to get there. Have you climbed a bike with someone who looked so confident? And he said, take me somewhere. And the guy was speeding as if he was going to kill you. And then he said, where did you say you are going again? I, I know it's where. And he said, I thought you said you know the place. He said, well, um, mention the name again. I think I'm... I'm. And he said, so wh where were you going with this kind of speed? Lights. Listen. Every dimension of result in the kingdom has a light and illumination component that connects to it. If it's finances, there is a dimension of spiritual truth that connects to it. If it is speed, if it is restoration, if it is influence, all of these facets of results have a, a, an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated to them. Are we together now? Can I tell you this? Our knowledge of God is, our pursuit and the knowledge of God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll continue to be learning God. But the keys that make for a successful life are finite. You can hold them. They are not infinite. You can actually hold the keys that make for a successful life. They are many, but they are finite. Are we together? Like a student, Learning never stops, but when you went to school, there was an exact curriculum allocated for the degree you went to get, isn't it? When you exhausted it, they gave it to you. So you can beat your chest and say, I am a doctor or I am a this and that. It doesn't mean your learning has stopped, but you have exhausted that curriculum. There is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for specific spiritual outcomes. You want to rise financially, there is an exact body of knowledge allocated. You want favor upon your life, there is an exact body of knowledge. Isn't it amazing that many times we desire outcomes without the knowledge that connects us to them? For instance, if it is favor you want to see in your life, why am I not seeing favor? I know the Bible says I should be favored, but why is it not working? Because you do not understand the dynamics that make for favor. Light. So, Apostle, what are the laws that govern favor, for instance? Just as if I desire favor, just wishing and hoping that favor will come, I, I would frustrate myself. I have to learn the principles that control favor in this kingdom. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Are you seeing now? Favor is a product of light. Favor works with sight. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. When your hand is empty, it's not, it's, it's not a, 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 a happenstance. There is an exact spiritual law you are violating that leads to emptiness. Are we together? Apostle, why am I not favored? Because for many of us, you think, oh, if God just wants to favor me, he will favor me. And I've respectfully observed in the body of Christ that the definition of favor, you know, many times we say favor is unmerited. I understand what you are trying to say. But the truth is that 
it is the dimension of favor that works as unmerited access with respect to salvation that is unmerited. Favor is very merited. I'm, I'm just using favor as a case study to explain light. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. This is the Lord that controls favor. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Read with me, please. One to read. <laughs> So the Bible gives us the similitude of two pregnant women, two pregnant women. The first woman is called good understanding and that she has a child in her womb. When she gives birth, the name of that child is favor. There is also another woman called transgression. She gives birth. The name of her child is hardship. So when you see the child, no child falls from the sky. There is a mother that gives birth to that child. Theoretically speaking, the womb of a woman should be able to give birth indefinitely, isn't it? That means you can program favor again and again. I've told you if it happens only once, it's breakthrough, not favor. The proof that it is favor is consistency regardless the circumstances. So many people have not really experienced favor. So hoping that it will happen, you will just testify once in four years, once in five years. What happened to you is not favor. What happens to you is the law of time and chance because it happens to everybody. You can choose and program favor over your life and it happens every time you will get to a point where if in a day you are not favored you go on a retreat because you know something is wrong are you blessed yes. good understanding is what gives favor but the way of the transgressor is hard favor works with the power of sight let me tell you this if the grace for favor is really on you, believe me when I say this, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person. Favor works with sight. That's how it works. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's hurry up. Is God helping us? Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part, please. And Esther obtained favor where? In the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. So if the favor of God is on you, if I can look at you, that grace will compel me to attend to you. It's true. It's true. This is scripture. Not even the king could withstand it. Verse 17. Give us the same scripture. Esther 2 and verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor where? In his sight. I've told you favor works with sight. favor is on you you activate the principles it's, it's, it's a charm like compelling force that people just look at you and they are compelled to want to bless you can I tell you the truth everybody is a giver it's just that what is on you is not sufficient to compel the resources because an uncle who vowed that he will never help you who carry the same seed and kneel down before a man of God and say, give me an honor of taking this. Whereas it was one-fifth what he's giving that you were asking for. Everybody is a giver. It's just that you program your possibilities by yourself. The power of light. Go and get pastor's tapes. Get the CDs. Don't say I was there when they preached it. Is this kind of carelessness that makes us to be around miracles and never experience it? I listen to my own teachings as if I did. I was not the one who preached it. I don't listen to it with the arrogance of, oh, I know this. No. When Joshua Selman is blessing, I go down on my knees and I receive it too. Believe what I'm saying. This is why most people who are members in a church, usually they are the ones who don't receive. So people just come because the people come with hunger and passion. They buy all the tapes. They say it's an honor. You mean I'm meeting Pastor Kingsley? Please, I have discerned that there is a grace for favor. Let it come upon my life. Yet you are the one holding the water like the wine presser, the butler, and yet it never blesses you. Are we together? Light, discernment, 
Make up your mind that you will be a student of knowledge. Knowledge first before clothes. Knowledge first before luxury. Invest in knowledge. What you have, you have. The law of light. Let's hurry up number three. Wherever we stop, we'll just pray for tonight. The third spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is called the law of transformation. Hmm. The power of a transformed mind. You want to make progress. You want to move forward. You have to sustain a superior belief system that is higher and greater than the context of culture, the context of your background, this is where many well-meaning believers, we refuse to transit mentally. We, we, we are loyal to belief systems that are destructive, satanic. Do you know your mindset is the gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons flow through to access your life? Are we together? Transformation is very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. There are many believers who have refused to be transformed. And because of their refusal for transformation, they find out that they are unable to walk in the fullness of that which God desires. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, look up please, so is he, not so he will be. You are already it. Your thought life, your mindset, your perspectives. Write this down, please. Let's talk a bit about mindsets. If this is where I stop tonight, it is too important to be brushed. Write this down. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It is a viewpoint. It is a perspective. Your mindset talks about your ideologies, your value systems, your thinking pattern. Let me define what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that the victim is kept perpetually in that line of thought. It is that spiritual condition that makes the word of God of none effect. That means what the devil does when he wants to destroy you is to bring informations that are based on lies, informations that are not consistent with the character of God. They may be sociologically right. They may be thoughts that you are familiar with. When he finds out that those thoughts are crystallized in your mind, Demon spirits come to build a wall around that mindset to ensure that there is no other way you think because your thinking is what keeps the door open for their operation. If you're, The Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That means what follows you is a report card of what you believe. You don't drive what follows you. You change what you believe and what follows you changes too. You see that now? These signs shall follow them that believe. So what is following me is following me because of what I believe. Failure, retrogression. You have a relationship in two weeks. All your friends just hate you and leave you. Everybody, you've given excuses that everybody hates you. The signs are following you. You don't say, go, I don't like you. That's not how you drive them. You change their, they are coming in honor. Something in your mind is attracting them. When you become disloyal to those faulty belief systems, the signs also change. Are we together? Mindsets are formed through cultural influences. Now, there are positive aspects of culture, but there are very wrong, demonic, and destructive aspects of culture. Family backgrounds, past experiences, failures and limitations, Levels of exposure, associations, all these are factors that frame our mindsets. 
And when God wants to do business with you in this kingdom, you will have to contend for a transformed mind. There are many people who God cannot use them today because something is wrong with their thinking. Their thinking does not give that allowance. Mindset. How does the process of transformation occur? We're praying. Number one, the first process that leads to transformation is awareness, a recognition. Even if you don't know the answer, the fact that you know you are in a situation that needs help is already the process of transformation. Transformation starts with recognition and awareness. Even if it's an awareness of your ignorance, it is a miracle in itself. A child does not know he's a child. I hope you know that. It's an adult that knows that what the child is doing is called childishness. A fool does not know he is foolish. It's only a wise person that there has to be a reference. So when God wants to show you mercy, he will find a way of contrasting your mindset with a superior belief. Now you look from that lens and see that, ah, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, you will flatter yourself in your mid because in your world, you are still king, no matter how depraved that world is. You will know how faulty your kingdom is when another king comes. To. In ancient times, there were times when other kings would come. Both the king and his kingdom, they sweep them. That's how mindsets are. You can live in a small world and because you are king in that small world, you can still believe that it's a kingdom worthy of living in. Until God expands your mind by showing you the possibilities that can be, then you will come back and start deconstructing those mindsets. Mindsets are powerful, very powerful. Genesis 11, let me show you something as we pray. Please give us Genesis 11, we'll read the first four verses, maybe four or five. The Bible says, and the whole earth were of one language and of one speech, verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China, and they dwelt there. Verse 3, the Bible says, And they said to one another, Goto, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they made bricks for stone and slime they made for mortar. Notice, notice that Nimrod was just proposing something. They had not started the building. He was doing something to their minds. Gentlemen, I'm putting you as a team we are on a project. Whether it was a spiritual building or physical, we know that creation happened. There was a building and he started by working on their minds. Verse 4, the Bible says, he said to them, let us build a city whose tower and whose top may reach the heavens and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Verse 5, now this is a very fearful scripture. Read it with me. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Stop. That means while they were talking in the realm of the spirit, a building was rising. And God said, who is building? He didn't come. And, they had not started. But God said he came to see the building that was finished already. The moment their mind started building it in the realm of the spirit, there was a structure that was rising that called the attention of God. Everything is built twice. Anything that is not built twice cannot be truly built. You build your company twice. You build your destiny twice. And the first building is the authentic one. Because even if the other one is destroyed, that one will force a physical equivalence of it to come. Believe what I'm teaching you. It's true. So you can be right where you are. And the Holy Spirit takes your mind to a place where the great are seated and says this is your space in destiny. While that is happening in heaven they are already seeing you move whereas you think you are in one small room. Do you know the realm of the spirit can discern progress? Please hear what I'm telling you. This is how some of us came to this thing by the grace of God. Right from where you are your body may be limited by transport fare but your mind has an ability, your mind has omnipresence. It can enter your future and find out that that thing God said is true. It will return back 
Only your mindset can hold your hand to where you need to be. I remember days when I would have the vision, seeing myself around the world preaching the gospel, standing and talking and ministering to kings and nobles. From that background is a joke based on my background. But I found out that this mind is a miracle. It's a miracle that will take ages for men to know what God gave them. Dream with God. Right from that room. Dream with God. And there is no power in existence. Men can bully your body, not your mindset. The power, the law. This, this is one of the most powerful spiritual laws I learned in my life. It is, the, uh, it is this law that keep, puts everybody at the same level in life. Everybody has the same opportunity. You may not believe what I'm telling you, but it's true. From the lens of a transformed mind, the justice system of God ensures that if you use your mind, there is no limitation that will be sustained in your life. Go back home. Write down the business idea. Write down the vision for 2021. Write a scripture, connect to it, and dream with the Spirit of God. Let Him show you. While that is happening, your current mindset will say you are mad. Is right. That's why you are living it. Your current mindset will say, no, no, it has. You can wave it goodbye and say, I wave this level of life goodbye, and it will wave you back forever. Hallelujah. The only limit in my life is the voice of God and process. These are the only limits I have in my life. The voice of God and process. These are the only limits. I have chosen that these are the only things that limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Our time is up. Can you spare me five more minutes? Thank you. Please listen. I want you to pay attention. I've shared with you the law of vision, the law of light, specific spiritual illumination. Your, your spiritual sojourn is profitless if you cannot connect the result that that light leads to. Just reading the Bible randomly in hope that you will ease the guilt of not being serious with God will not profit you. You have to look for specific light that leads to specific outcomes. Are we together? And then the power of a transformed mind. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to change my mind. It's a decision. How do you contend for transformation? Valuable information. You have to introduce to your mind information that are now superior in context relative to what you already have there. You cannot listen to what you've been listening to before, before you became a Christian, before you came to this church and expect transitions to happen. You will have to sustain the discipline. That's the, the discipline of allowing the truth that can build your mind to be introduced and you have to pay the price to be consistent I dare you go and get your pastor's tapes make up your mind that I must listen to two or three or four of these teachings every day that's why I said it requires discipline discipline You listen to one in the morning. You can play one while you are walking. The goal is not just awareness. The goal is transportation. You are transporting that information right to your subconscious. This is true. One more law and then we are done tonight. The law of productivity these are the laws that govern advancement the law of productivity 
Proverbs chapter 18, please, and verse 16, the law of productivity. It says the gift of a man, Proverbs 18 and verse 16, the gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So your gift is like an usher. You know how you come into a place and they say, let me see your invitation. Oh, you're invited this way. It's your gift that is responsible for giving you space. To have an illusion that there is a space waiting for you is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere waiting for you. You create that space. Are we together? Yes. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. I was, I was just celebrating and commending your pastor for the profound, his profound understanding in the area of faith, in the area of family life. I mean, he's uncanny, his perspectives. It's true. It's true. I think you should clap. How many lives, how many destinies, how many homes, how many people he has given answers and explanation and perspectives. The gift of a man. Nobody is going to keep clapping for you indefinitely for nothing. People love you, but they love themselves. They love their future. So to have this belief that people will indefinitely keep clapping, no. You must have something of substance that gives you space in destiny. I made up my mind as a covenant with my own life and destiny that everywhere God has granted me a gift and an ability, I will sharpen it in a way that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Not for self-aggrandizement, but that you are, you, 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 these are principles that lift you to a position where you can represent the purposes of God. Please challenge the spirit of laziness in your life. Some of you, without developing your gift, people have started commenting on it. Imagine what happens when you develop it. I hope you still like me. Please, listen. Listen to me. Nobody goes to a mango tree without mango and just starts clapping and is happy. You look at the tree, you may stay a few minutes to get shade and move. But once it is time for mango, as it starts coming out, it starts, the, the fruit is calling you. The mango does not want followers. The mango is not looking for followers, but it is too gifted to be ignored. The mango does not go around calling for followers. It just keeps building the mango. And because hunger is something you cannot resist, you may ignore it for a while, but one day, when the sun scourges you and you stand and watch this mango, Don't call men. They only produce fruits. And men have to swallow their pride. Have you seen the skills that people employ to climb trees? All because they are looking for... I once saw a video of... Um, I think they were trying to... This, this palm, palm... I think the one they climb with as though they are climbing a ladder. I said, you mean all this skill to reach that tree? Be gifted. And watch how people will inconvenience themselves with joy to come and place a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When people give excuses of time, excuses of comfort, it's because your gift is not notable enough. I assure you, ask the herbalist. A politician, respectfully speaking, will come with his whole dignity and meet a man in a tattered room and not ask whether there is AC and not ask whether the man can speak English. The man says, turn behind and move backward. And he says, yes, sir. Because he knows that my, my political career is at the mercy of that. May you be so gifted in the name of Jesus. May your gift be so refined that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Believe what I share with you. There are people in this country who cannot go out of a job for one month. Believe me. Believe me. In as much as we are saying there is no job, there are companies that if some of their people cough, they will buy a pharmacy, not a drug.
Make up your mind that you will be so gifted. If it's a ministry, discern the dimensions of God's grace that he has put and work it out, place your life upon it. Apostle, God has called me to be a prophet. Like who? Everything you prophesy is wrong. The world will not place a demand on that kind of grace. Let's let in the name of honesty. Are we together? Apostle, God has called me to be a kingdom financier. Let me know what you know about finances. Can you talk to kings? You are talking to your colleagues and you are happy about it. Your colleagues are not billionaires. Thank God for them. But your goal is to be able to mentor kings that a nation will call you to hear the counsel of God upon your life. Make up your mind that you will not be small. Go back and refine your gifts. Apostle, do you know I can cook? Can the governor eat your food? Because you see, you have to serve kings to receive the rewards of kings. Am I challenging you? Let me tell you this. There is nothing that, it, that is of value that is not in sufficient demand in this life to bless you. If you are in every industry, there are people at the top. It's those who are at the top that enjoy the blessings. Make up, shake away mediocrity. When people are clapping for you, look at those clapping for you. If they are not kings, keep moving. Mark 1, 37. And when they had found him, this was the story of Jesus. Jesus had finished healing, doing several things. He ran away to go and just rest and pray. And men would not let him rest. There was such a magnetic property. Let me tell you, being gifted carries a strange a strange magnetic property. It's amazing the level of inconvenience people will go through with joy when you are gifted. I assure you in today's world, most likely it's only your family that will love you whether you are valuable or not. God and your family members. They are enough to support you but not enough to reward you. The vast majority of your reward will be in the hands of people who are in desperate need. They need people who are gifted. I made a vow with God that you will never meet me twice to be blessed. No. Can you rise to that level of grace? Can you rise to that level of value? You are a CEO, your company. What solutions are you providing? Can I meet you once and be addicted to you? Because of the power of the value that you carry. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts. And people paint me. And sometimes when I see the photo they give, I say, you mean this is me? You didn't see it? You know, of course, I love what they did. But, ah! I say, oh, no, no, come on, please. Are we together? And yet there are a few that I look at and I'm like, you drew this? You say, yes, sir. What do you do? You say, once in a while I just do it and I'm saying, my goodness, once in a while? I would, I, I, I would pay a thousand times for this. Nigerians wake up. Believers wake up. There is something you have that the world is looking for. And can I tell you, they will not come to you while you are growing. They will come to the refined version of you. If your pastor hides today and says he's not going to preach for five months, he's going to have to beg God in that retreat and say, God, release me to bless people because they will not let him rest. Someone's home at least will be on fire enough for them to call him and say, sir, please wake up. I don't care whether you are having a retreat in the name of Jesus. If it takes flying you to this place, oh, you need to see how men react to real value.
Your desire of decades can come to you in a moment when you make up your mind to be truly valuable. These are the laws of advancement. You enter your Sabbath to the degree to which you are valuable. You rise to a point where competition is no longer a possibility. You never have planes clashing with themselves in the air. There is enough space there. Traffic is usually down. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that as I'm standing here right now, I'm rounding up, as I'm standing here right now, no matter how I stretch, I can't see the island. No matter how I stretch, I can't see Abel Kuta Ogun State because I'm on the ground. But a star can be shining here and I can call someone in another state. He can still see the same star because it is high to the sky. If you become that star from where you are, you don't have to be moving. Anywhere people look at you, was it not a star that was shining? The, the same star called the Magi, right to that place where Jesus was. Spiritually, I know that some of us here are in ministry and you came to just honor pastor and honor the conference. God is challenging us. There is a dimension of grace, spiritual illumination, value that can be brought. When you bring something, the table of greatness is still empty, but you don't sit down for nothing. You first present your gift, then you sit down. And life must vet that gift. There is a threshold level of competence and accuracy that grants you access to sit down. Make up your mind that you will take away shame and reproach from your life and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet, please. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so. and we're done. point and then I speak over your life and work night. One prayer point. Lord, I make up my mind to partner with the word and the spirit for an exceptional life. It's time for me to move forward. Open your mouth and pray. Please be tired of where you are. I came to shake your current level. There is more in you. You call it gaining momentum. Someone is praying. Coming out today. No shot. 
Keeping me from moving forward. I break free right now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Thank God for what has been done in my life so far. In ministry, in business. But I declare in the name of Jesus, it's time to take a flight with destiny. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray in the name of Jesus. You are shifting to a higher level. God is planting a dissatisfaction. It's time for the globe to hear your voice. It's time for your destiny to rise. No shadow Please listen to me. I share the burden of your pastor. He's here because he loves you. He's here because he desires to see you rise. Let me tell you this. The pride of every true leader is not his personal achievements. It's to see that the people committed to him rise by the spirit. These laws are irrefutable. They are backed up by God's own jealousy. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's because it's time, it's a season for you to rise. I want to pray for you. I apologize, our time is gone. But in this prayer, I want you to believe. Because one of the laws that I will be sharing with you is the law of spiritual empowerment. In this kingdom, it is not by might. In this kingdom, it is not by power. It takes more than intention and desire. Hallelujah. Pastor, can I speak over your people? One of the graces that God has given me is the grace for speed. I want to pray that grace upon someone's life. Help them, please. Help them. I stretch my hands. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ, upon everyone here at David's Christian Center, I stand by the God of heaven and I stretch my hands. At the count of three, may the mantle that makes for speed, in the name of Jesus, help them please, please help them. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Outside, take that grace. Shabakatakatos. Speed to your destiny. Help them, please. I prophesy speed to your destiny. Every delay. You are in business here. Receive speed. Help them, please. Speed right now. Please bring them out if you can, just in one minute. Bring them out if you can. Speed. Take that grace now. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Very quickly, let's save time. Speed outside inside i release that grace here at this conference i shift you by prophecy step into a new dimension a new dimension a new dimension i break the old i break the old For those of you who are tired, you've done your best, but it looks like this. There's no force to move you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. May the anointing that moves men to next levels, may that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. 
take that grace in the name of Jesus. Take that grace for your spiritual life. Take that grace. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your finances. Listen to me. Please listen to me. There are several levels of wealth. Three of them. There is wealth that comes by providing value. And then you are rewarded in exchange. Money being one of the rewards. There is wealth that comes. You don't sell that value. It's the reward that comes when you transform lives. But there is a third level of wealth. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth by prophecy. It says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. I want to speak over your finances. That you have the open-heartedness to listen. You will marvel and wonder at what my God will do for you. I stand in the name of Jesus. And I join faith with your pastor. A man that God had so helped. You don't have to bring them out again. That's all right. In the name of Jesus Christ, over your finances, I decree and declare, between now and the next 90 days, like the ark of God in the house of Weber Edom, in the name of Jesus, I shift you to strange financial testimonies. Strange financial testimonies. I speak to your business, strange financial testimonies, your family, every financial pressure, those of you in debt, those of you owing, I speak to you, come out of it now. Hallelujah. Finally, let me pray over your prayer life and your word life. No matter what goes right in your life, if your spiritual life goes wrong, that is, the, that is the control room of your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. An attack on your word life. It says, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. It says, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Every dead prayer life here, that suddenly the passion to pray the passion to wake up, the passion to fast is no longer there. Right now I speak over your prayer altar. Let it catch fire now. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. The grace to pray. The grace to pray in the name of Jesus. This assembly is a house of prayer. I release that grace upon you. The grace to study scripture. The discipline to study scripture. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost.